Hi folks, welcome back to the Shade Tree CNC workshop. Today we're going to do a build for a DUI router plane. So let's get started with that. We searched the internet for a appropriate uh, drawing or model and we were able to find that and we basically copied a JPEG of that. Now working in SOLIDWORKS, we can import that into SOLIDWORKS as part of a sketch so that we can later trace it. And so in doing so, uh, I'm demonstrating here in SOLIDWORKS that uh, I've actually drawn some sketch lines over the top of the, over the sketch. And I've already drawn this, so I'm basically backing up through the uh, design but I've already extruded it and we'll kind of walk through the, the various steps and features of this particular design. And so there's the sketch that we've drawn all the way around and then we basically uh, extruded that sketch. Now we'll go ahead and hide the sketch so we uh, can only look at the uh, what we're building now. So now we're going to end up with a pocket so that we can put a three quarter inch dowel in it. And this will be basically our tool holder. So we're designing it currently for a uh, 3 8 uh, hex key. And so we need to make a clearance through the bottom all the way through the tool so we're clear. And at this point, we've set up some planes and some. Uh, references so that we can establish a coordinate measuring system because we're going to step into actually generating the g-code right here in SOLIDWORKS. Now we'll go ahead and pull up the uh, uh, HMS Express uh, free plugin for SOLIDWORKS and we'll establish a new job. We're going to uh, basically set up uh, or use, utilize the coordinate system we just set up in the drawing. And we're going to establish a job which will define the tool bit that we're going to use, its diameter, its feed rate, and speeds, and all of that. So we're going to go ahead and select the, uh, the tool from our uh, tool library. We're going to use an eighth inch bit. Well, I believe that was a quarter inch bit. Okay, so now in SOLIDWORKS, a lot of these profiles are not totally round and so we want to do a complete bore. And so rather than to try and select features uh, that are actually in the solid model, we're going to um, draw a few extra sketches and just leave them uh, in the model and we'll select those sketches as for the geometry that we want the tool paths to follow. Setting multiple uh, depths of, of cut, establishing those depths. So now we've generated our tool path. Now we'll go ahead and simulate that tool path so you can see what it looks like. We'll basically show stock and we'll go ahead and run the simulation. Okay, at this point, 
we're going to skip ahead because all the other surfaces are selected the same way. And so now we're going to run a full simulation of the entire program to where we run our pockets, we run our contours, and we run a full outboard simulation. And now we get ready to uh, post the G-code. So that'll be the next step here, where we'll go ahead and select a name for it and a place to put it. File name to the file. code, save it to our G-code folder, and in SolidWorks, a, uh, the G-code viewer automatically pops up when we're done running the posting. So now I'll run a back plot just to see what the code and the toolpath looks like, just to be sure that everything's kosher. looks good. Rather than run the simulation again, we'll just go ahead and close out. Put this on uh, a flash card and haul it out to the machine. So here we are. We got the piece of wood drawn out uh, as far as the square that we're going to put the uh, part and we're, our form of clamps is uh, uh, a, a couple of wedges between fixed blocks. So now we're using our pendant uh, to drive the uh, bit into our center position to where we want to start the code. So with our pendant, we can jog fast, jog slow, bring it down. Slow the jog to a crawl all with the pendant. Put it all on XY, now we'll seek Z. Get that done. Okay, now at this point, go back to the computer and establish our G54 work coordinates to 000 because we've already referenced the machine. As far as machine coordinates, when we started the machine up, we basically referenced them back to the limit switches. So at this point, we're going to raise our, uh, our Z up and we're going to home the machine just for verification that our G54 is correct. Should we ever lose our position or power outage or whatever, we ought to be able to come back and be able to start over. So at this point, we're uh, homing the, the machine back to our limit switches. Now I home my machine to the back uh, right corner. So takes a few seconds because it's only running at about 20% speed. We don't want to crash the stops because it doesn't really know at this point where the crash stops are at or the limit switches. Once we've reached there, we now have machine coordinates set to 000, and we now tell it to go to zero, which is our work coordinates. And it should come right back to where I established it. So now anytime I ever lose power, I should be able to come right back to that spot and be able to pick up where I left off. So now we'll go ahead and start the cut. The actual cut here has been sped up. Uh, it, the actual run time to cut this entire part out was eight and a half minutes.
Okay, so in Mach 3, and the limit switches, I believe, that you can specify a different location if you want to run a G28. Now, I have a G28 loaded into my code, so when I first start off, it'll basically go to machine zero. But if I run a G28, it goes to a park, and that's what it's doing now. It's running, it's finished the project, and then it'll go off to a pre-designated in Mach 3, a park location, which is very close to the limit switches, so that when I want to re-reference the machine, it's, it doesn't have to travel a full distance. set up and round over the top edges so it kind of feels nice and smooth to cut them over. shopping at uh, Home Depot for a hex key or an Allen wrench and instead we found this square key stock so we decided to use that because it was only like three dollars. Ready to hacksaw off this thing so that it's perpendicular to the back edge of the key and create a blade at the same time. And I shortened the video here mainly because I didn't figure you want to spend 15 minutes watching me hacksaw this thing. And I ended up using a different hacksaw to finish it because the Harbor Freight hacksaw kept the blade kept popping off the thing. So I needed a locking collar and I went and I purchased a $5 shaft uh, collar that has set screw 
then I got to thinking that these uh, uh, three-quarter inch conduit connectors would probably do just as well. And I get like five for two dollars. So. The next thing was to cut the key slot in a wooden dowel because we're going to glue that into the base. So we hand wrote the G code for this. We didn't bother to use any program. We basically used a tech standard for Bob 3 and uh, I hand wrote the G code. We'll spruce it up a little bit here with some dark walnut stain and we'll follow it with uh, some amber shellac which will kind of give it a little bit more depth and character to the finish. And we'll finish it completely off after everything dries with a coat of paste wax. So here's the finished product, all put together with that $5 collar ring that I spent. And I figured, you know, for folks that uh, are on a budget, then uh, the uh, conduit connector is probably a cheaper way to go. So we'll put that one on and show you that that one fits. Same time. So at this point, I want to thank all of you for watching the video. Uh, please uh, like, share, and comment if you like.